Welcome. Welcome to Conspiracy Brothers. Welcome to Conspiracy Brothers. The brothers are finally together. This is a live podcast. Hell we yeah. had to do it live. We're doing it live! <laughs> we'll do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! And thing sucks! That's tomorrow and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Fuck it, we'll do it live! <laughs> <laughs> so the we were just walking out on the Sunset Strip, getting seen, trying to feel out the mask density. Yes, yeah, so what'd you think? So it seems like the mask thing, things are improving. Mm. So it seems like, you know, you definitely have some people. I saw a few people in their cars that, that had them on. Yeah. I didn't, there were a few people that didn't have them. And I didn't see anybody with two masks. That's something. <laughs> Uh, we saw a few people jogging with their masks on. Yeah. Which, that troubles me. It's <laughs> some hardcore brainwashing going on. I mean, on. by themselves jogging in, you know, 95 degree weather in the sunshine with their masks on. That jogging past the people that are eating, like, a foot away. Yeah. Yeah, the inconsistency of it all. Oh, my God. But I, it's, it's opening up, and people are fighting through, man. The performing arts, the culture of Hollywood... I think it's pushing through, man. You think? I, well, I don't know. You live here. I know. I, I hope so. But I'm just a, I'm uh, jaded. I'm a tourist. Yeah. Um, well, I, I liked that we saw a lot of people not wearing masks, but we did see a lot wearing them as well. And we saw some co-mingling. Like, I was surprised at that. Who would have thought? I never would have thought that I'd be wanting to see people's faces so much. I know. I never thought I was such a fan of other people's faces until they started to be covered up by these fucking masks. Yeah. And it's like uh, these maskers, they, they got the trifecta going because they got it where... Because largely these people are ugly. So they they're, have more incentive to cover their faces. True. They, they got a lot of wonkiness that can, they can cover up. Yeah. And they get to uh, berate people that don't wear them. So that makes them feel good. They get good. to stand in judgment. They fucking love that shit. Oh, yeah. And then they get to uh, commit criminal acts with anonymity. <laughs> uh, and impunity. Yeah. Fucking going out there and, uh, and, and, and bothering people when they're just fucking chilling. Yeah. And ain't right. Yeah, man. They're like, these people are like going up and like uh, attacking people like at these restaurants, like what we just walked by. We could be sitting at the restaurant and people just like come up and start like attacking you. Could you imagine if we just started being like eating people's food right off their plate? <laughs> I saw a video of this woman. She just went up and she took this dude's beer off his table. She started drinking it. What did the dude do? He just sat there. See, that's some shit. That's some shit. People shouldn't be able to feel like they can get away with doing something like that. I know. They should feel fucking scared. But nowadays, all you gotta do is say, oh, that person's a Nazi. <laughs> Man, I, I think the question should be, should be posed to the people that are interrupting dinners and taking food off of people's plates. They're the fucking problem in this situation. Yeah. But anyway, it, but it's good to be out here because I'm not, not in the scene. So it's always dead where I live. But around here, so California is not going the route of fucking New York City, which is oh, thank what I'm hearing there is yeah. some scary shit. Oh yeah, that Cuomo and De Blasio. Oh my god, those people need to be in jail. That guy De Blasio, I always knew there was something wrong with that guy. Yeah, but holy shit, holy shit, he makes Garcetti look good. Yeah, and Garcetti is evil. He's pretty bad. And then there's that one, that, that troll lady from, what, what, what city is that, Chicago? The one that looks oh, like the fraggle? Oh, Lori, Lori Lightfoot. Oh, my God. Whoa. She's definitely not human. Was she elected? People, she won a popularity contest? I was wondering that. How, who was voting for these people? I thought it was a popularity contest. No, that bitch did not win a popularity no contest. She couldn't win school president. <laughs> she ain't gonna be mayor. <laughs> I don't believe it. And then her saying, yeah, you know, you guys... Well, she was the one amongst the many that, you know, the hypocrites, but she was, she got the, uh, the police to like, you know, come to her street, and make sure that the peace was kept. But yeah. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a person who I take my personal hygiene very seriously. As I said, I felt like I needed to, um, have a haircut. I'm not able to do that myself. And so I got a haircut. Yeah, you got people breaking up parties. People are trying to have a good time. Tough times out there, and people got to have their fun where they can. And you got, we're going to shut off your power if you have a, a gathering of more than four people. That's tyranny, man. 
We're, we're like living under tyrants. Has that, people fucking telling us what we can and can't do? We can't get together. We can't, you can't go see your loved ones. You, you can't could see have your, a fucking peaceful, peaceful protest. Well, we're just going to have to protest at our loved ones' houses now. Yeah. To see our parents, we're going to have to come there and, and have a riot. Yeah. To see our parents. That's what it, that's what it takes. Dude, if we have to bring Molotov, <laughs> Molotov cocktails <laughs> with the flowers on Mother's Day. Did you see the guy that uh, threw the Molotov cocktail and then lit himself on fire? No, uh, it doesn't it's, surprise me. It was great. <laughs> yeah. But not all... this Molotov cocktail shit is pretty crazy. And people are... They're getting pretty gully with these fucking things. Yeah. They're lighting a lot of fires. People weren't lighting fires when we were kids, man. Nah, they are today. I mean... That's one thing. That's next level. Like, crazy. You know? Yeah. I mean... When I heard that in so Soho... Because I can remember... When I heard that, so, that the places got, stores got looted in Soho in New York City, that's when I knew that, I was like, this is, this is seriously fucked. Yeah. So recently, there was that article by that James Al, Altucher, I think his name is, hmm. that guy in New York, and I never heard of this guy before this article where he said New York is, is fucking finished, right? Yeah. And then Jerry Seinfeld was like, New York's not finished, this James Altucher guy's a dick. And he just called this guy out. And Jerry wow. Seinfeld, people are hating on him now because he's like the rich guy. What do you know from your mansion? Yeah. New York looks like shit to people who are actually like trying to live. Yeah. I don't know. How that fuck you money? He also, <laughs> people forget, he could have been me too because his, well, he, and he married her. But when he got with his girl that he's with now, she was knee high to a June bug. She was a young chick. Mm. And he was, I think, in his 40s. And I think she was 70. Wow. 18. <laughs> a little, a little bit, a little bit cringeworthy if we're gonna put it in, yeah. you know, wow. 2020 standards, Mr. Seinfeld. Although I don't want to hate this show, makes me, it's made me smile a yeah. lot. So I don't know, I don't know. Jerry Seinfeld, to me, being someone who's like not really very well educated on the whole situation, hasn't been in New York City since this <laughs> went down. I think Jerry Seinfeld came off looking like a dick. Mm. Well, I've heard from a number of people that he is a dick. I kind of believe it, man. But you know what's interesting about, like, so his coffee and cars shit, that show? Yeah. So he had Eddie Murphy on, and Eddie Murphy's hilarious. And I didn't super, see that one. Super though. cool, man. And, but so Eddie Murphy brings up how um, Sammy Davis Jr. was a Satanist. Oh, shit. He brings it up and he's talking about it and talking about how Sammy... See, I've never seen any good episodes of that Comedians and Cars show. I gotta watch that. I haven't seen... Yeah, that one's good. All right, I'll watch that. Um... But I just couldn't believe that Eddie Murphy was saying that about Sam. I mean, I knew that about Sammy Davis Jr., but I'm like, damn, he's bringing it up on the Seinfeld show. Shit. I mean, dude, shit is coming out now. Yeah. And Jerry's reaction was funny because he was like, oh, I can't believe you're saying this. He'd be like, we're not talking about this here. Yeah. See, Seinfeld, he's too PG now. Yeah. He's always, even now. But I think that's he, what's enabled him to be the top paid performer. At what point do you give that shit up? How much fucking money do you need yeah. before you're like, you know what, I'm going to say what I want to say now? Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess that's a lot of syndication, a lot of residual money that he's getting. But still, damn. Yeah. Talk some shit. Yeah. I heard Eddie Murphy's coming back to stand-up. Oh, yeah, that's what I heard, too. His stand is pretty fucking... Raw is pretty fucking good. I haven't watched it recently. Oh, yeah. But he, I watched it a few years ago, and that shit stood up. He definitely he's a monster. is one of the best, I think. He's a fucking monster. Yeah. His brother, though, man. Oh, yeah. Charlie, Charlie. Murphy's stories on The Chappelle Show were tremendous men. Charlie Murphy, lo losing Charlie Murphy was a huge loss. Yeah. Yeah, he was awesome. That Prince episode, though. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were you surprised that Prince could play basketball really well? It, I mean, not really, I guess. Cause no, because he, he plays the guitar so oh, well. Yeah. And he's unheralded. And he's yeah. not appreciated for being a fucking dead nasty guitarist yeah i mean he plays all of the instruments it's yeah amazing. he plays rhythm guitar and he plays like fucking impressive solos and, shit. and he's doing splits while he's doing it i mean no wonder he had to have all that fucking fentanyl assistance yes. with those, <laughs> doing those split i mean he was not a young man no. touring doing a lot of touring yeah i mean i think he was in his 50s yeah yeah he was awesome yeah you think they killed him i don't know i, I think they did because he, he was saying, he was spitting too much truth, you know? And he started talking out, uh, you know, about the system. And yeah. remember when he wrote, like, Slave on his face? Yeah. That was powerful. Yeah. 
Even, even as a kid, when I didn't really understand why he was doing that, I'm like, wow, he's saying something. 